Hey everybody, Mickey here. Welcome back to the Final Fantasy X walkthrough. We're here in, as you'll see, the Bevel Via Purifico with only Yuna. And if I get into any battles right now, I might be fleeing right away because, well, we only have Yuna in our party, but right up north we can see a dark silhouette of Kimari. Yuna, sorry we left you alone. No. It's okay. Yeah, the Via Purifico can be a little bit mazy. Lots of long corridors, but difficult to kind of go through. Not very clear direction of where to go. Because there's so many enemies and we only have a couple of party members here, let's go ahead and just flee for now. Because once we head up just north of over here, Should be able to go ahead. And if you'll see on the mini map over there to the west, there's Orin. There must be an exit somewhere. We search. I suppose that because everyone got captured since last time, well, or I should say put on trial, I don't really know exactly what the exact vernacular is, but we're all here in Via Purifico. You could go north up here, but there's no reason to. There's a dead end with some bars. Let's go ahead and hang south over here. And now that we have three party members, I suppose that we can take care of some of these enemies here. No one really knew. The cave iguions are fairly new, I suppose. But let's go ahead and pass the turn over to Kimari and take out one of the iguions. The Sahajins we've met up with before, but I do want to say that they should be taken out with piercing weapons. I would took I would have taken it out with Kimari, but you'll see that the Night Lance it doesn't actually have piercing; it just has this strength boosts. Speaking of which, most of the enemies here are actually weak to lightning slash thunder, whatever. Final Fantasies are calling it these days. So let's go ahead and equip those real fast to Kimari and Orin. Yeah, it's been pretty nice actually having. We want to go over here, by the way. Oh, nope. It's a dead end. It's been pretty nice having all of those elemental weapons because they've helped out throughout this whole time in the game. Lulu. I... It's okay, I know. We pick up Lulu, which is the final party member that we can pick up from here on. We get a white magic sphere. I'm not too particular, just like what the black magic spheres do. Actually, I'd like to go ahead and use that. The white magic spheres and the skill spheres were able to learn skills or white magic that anyone else has learned uh, that's in our party. So speaking of which, let's go ahead and learn, use one of these black magic spheres. And we're, we're going to go over here to learn Thundera. We're just going to use one. We're not going to go too crazy because what I'd like to save for those Black Spears eventually is over here. Just about, what is this here? If Lulu's right here. She's got to go ahead and get Demi. She's only about, about like seven or eight sphere levels away from getting the level three, the Gauss spells. So. Once Lulu's learned those, then we can have Yuna use some black magic spears to be able to learn them. After we pick up Lulu, let's see, I want to route over here. And I want to say, let's keep going south. I might be wrong. Again, this place is a little bit mazy. Yeah, now with the lightning strike, these guys are cake. Go ahead and bring Lulu in here. She can do a little bit of damage herself. And off screen, what I'd like to do is I'd like to fill up at least one of my Aeons, one of their overdrives. So I'll probably do that in the next battle here coming up. 
What is nice about this area is that they give oh, south, south. So you head all the way down to south, and you can grab this chest, which is an elixir, my tenth one, which is good. And we can s touch this glyph here for a very specific reason, by the way. But I was gonna say, yeah, this area has pretty weak enemies, so at least there's that going for it. Mazy, but easy to handle. I guess these are enemies that we haven't fought quite yet. The difficult part about these uh, bat eyes is that they're flying, so they're difficult to hit. Yeah, we don't have Waka to be able to take them out. I suppose that originally what the intention is, uh, the developers probably intended on... God, see, look at this. Probably, they're weak to fire, by the way. It probably intended for you to use your Aeons constantly to be able to do some real damage and take out enemies easier, but I don't know, I don't really like using Aeons too much. I feel like they're not cheap, but I guess I just feel as if they're... Like, the cast time to bring them out takes forever, and... I don't know, I, I, personally I don't really like using them all too much. I only really like using them when I actually need to. But anyways, you'll see here that I've kind of done a massive, just big circle. We're actually at the very beginning here of where Yuna was when she was alone. So now, we're gonna go down south, or up, I should say up north actually. Right over here. And even though this glyph is kind of glowing and showing the uh, arrow here, that's happening because we touched the glyph when we were in the southwest corner. Gonna just go past it and grab this chest. Okay, there's this chest that we can pick up. And it's got another black magic sphere, so what's nice about that is we basically used one with Yuna and got one here. Pretty positive that's the, again, that's the intention as well, to use the black magic sphere for Yuna to learn some black magic. We're gonna step on this glyph when it's facing that left arrow. This glyph, when it's charged up here, it acts as this teleporter. And so now, I believe I want to go ahead and step on it while it is heading, uh, well, down. Uh, am I correct in that? Hmm. Let me look here just to make sure. Well, I turned myself around here a good few times, so let's do this. Pretty positive I know my way back here. Let's head over to the right here to go to, well, exactly where I was initially. Now, instead of stepping on the platform, we're going to go back to the Black Magic Sphere chest that we got, and we're going to step on this glyph. Okay, knew that battle threw me off here, so let's go ahead and step here. And so now, I'm not sure exactly what it does, but... I guess it changes, changes things a little bit more. I, I don't know what happens here. I guess it activates it to be able to be placed in a totally different area. So now what we're gonna do is go to that glyph where it is now. I'm just gonna go up here and then we're gonna wrap around. You probably don't know where I'm, what I'm talking about with wrapping around, but I've been to this dungeon probably like six or seven times, so I kind of know where I'm going. We want to wait now to have the glyph pointing north. Nope, not that. <laughs> because if you remember, this is the area where I explained that it's a dead end because there's a barred off area here. And by using the platform, we're actually able to access this little area where we get a few chests here. Lucid Ring, I'm pretty sure that goes ahead and protects against confusion as a ward, but not a... Yeah, Confuse Ward and Poison Ward. Um, would be better if it was something like Confuse Proof, but we'll take it. Go ahead and get another Skill Sphere, which is not bad. I tend to be using those a lot later on in the game. And then, if we go here at this barred off area... Yeah, there's a hidden chest here for 10,000 gil, which... 
We'll actually be using some of that here shortly. We step on the Glyphsphere again while it's heading south, or down I should say, and we're back. As a fairly decent little shortcut here, if we wait till the pointer hits down, should be able to ride this all the way down to the save sphere where we found Orin. I think that there's one more enemy that we can run into. I'm going to try to run into him a couple times, but if I don't, uh, you know, I'll just be able to I'll probably show him off. I'll run into it off screen and then I'll show you the enemy that I want to battle. Here he is. What I had realized is that I was actually walking around the wrong area here. Here's a, a maze larva. Nothing too specific with this guy from what I remember. Most of the enemies here don't really have very interesting steals that I'm looking to take very much um, advantage of here. <laughs> nice little whack with the that ball tip stick that she's got there. And let's go ahead and take the maze larva out with thunder. Yeah, you can only run into the maze larvas here. Oh wow, I'm surprised I didn't take it out. You can only run into the maze larvas while you're in this section where there's like this little red light area here. This right here, right just north past the safe sphere. Also interesting to those ma maze larvas that you can't run away from them, I'm not really sure why. I figure that after we've done a little bit of leveling here, we've got some sphere grading to take care of. Um, like I told you guys last uh, a few minutes ago that I've gone ahead and gotten the overdrive filled up for, let's see who I can show. Ixion specifically, so that's ready, and that'll be pretty important here in the battles to come, so to speak. I'm most interested in wanting to go ahead and upgrade to Yuna's Fear Grid, specifically because, I mean, she's... We haven't had her for quite a while. I mean, we didn't have her during all of Beacon L Island, or the Sanubia Desert, whatever you want to call it. We didn't have her during the Albed Home sequence, so she's... I wouldn't say she's lacking in levels, but she's definitely, I mean, lacking in some screen time. I mean, hell, Yuna doesn't really get... Ooh, look at that strength plus four. Man, he's becoming stronger. He's getting stronger. But yeah, like I was saying, though, Yuna just doesn't, doesn't receive a lot of screen time. Uh, just recently getting her back. All right, pretty much all set here. Walk through this corridor here and once we get to our Lady marker Yuna, so it is you we Why find are you here? Isaru we rode the airship to the calm lands then came to Bevel Maester Kinnock summoned us then ordered us to deal with the traitors <sighs> you will fight us the temple's orders are law even if you are Lord Braska's flesh and blood you're a traitor. His guardians... I don't see them. Maroda and Passe are not here. I will do this unhappy deed myself. Forgive me, Lady Yuna. If you remember last episode, there was a voice that called out to Yuna, saying that they were sorry. Well, that's whose voice it was. It was Isaru specifically. I'm not really sure how you're supposed to know that, but that's whose it was. This is our first summon battle that, uh, well, we've had other Your summoner battles against my against Belgamine, but this one's for keeps here. Now, Yuna's Overdrive I haven't used yet, but is a grand summon, which means that it summons an Aeon with an Overdrive right out the get-go, so... I'm not going to be using that. Instead, let's go ahead and put our new summon to the test, Bahamut. Now, like I said, if I used Grand Summon and I summoned Bahamut, well, Bahamut would come in with his overdrive already filled. 
you may be wondering, well, what happens if my overdrive is already filled with the summon that I bring in? They get two summon, or two limits. Uh, overdrives. <laughs> Been playing too much Final Fantasy VII Remake. Bahamut is extremely strong, by the way, and there's not going to be very much creativity. There is one thing to note, though, is that Ifrit has his overdrive filled all the way, so I'm going to use shield until we block his overdrive. Yeah, that's one thing you got to make sure of. You just got to keep in mind watching the enemy's overdrive gauge because it'll definitely get you. Um, fortunately, we just did some sphere grinning with Yuna, and as I've always tell people, uh, told people before, like, beginner's tips, man. Level up every character as much as you can. You don't have imbalances in your levels. Because doing so, you know, we've leveled up Yuna, and... Our stats are so good that this battle's not really much of an issue. But that being said, if you weren't using Yuna very often, these Aeons, or Isaru's Aeons I should say, Isaru in general, he'll scale to your sphere grid, so not too much of an issue. Yeah, like I said, it's gonna be kind of unoriginal how I'm gonna take people out with Bahamut because, well, Yuna's stats are pretty strong. So, might as well just use attack. I could have definitely used um, Bahamut's magic spells. Maybe I should try that out here soon. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised actually. It would be nice if we it's saw that over yet. Isaru had different summons compared to Yuna, but. It seems like these are like the only summons that summoners are able to actually get. Only Aeons, I should say. It's like... Uh, like what? Like Valfor, Ifrit, Ixion, Bahamut. Pretty uninspired. Just gonna go ahead and keep on attacking. And if we're lucky, I might be able to show off the Overdrive. Oh, not quite. Not quite. Maybe right here? Hey, very nice. The best thing about Bahamut's Overdrive Mega Flare is that it has an innate break damage limit. As of right now, we can only do 9,999 damage. However, with Bahamut, he can break that damage. It's just one of his special abilities as an Aeon. See you later, sorry. Yeah. You s well, I was gonna say, you see there, <laughs> but <laughs> Bahamut proved me wrong. I didn't break the damage limit at all. He did less than 9,999. Well, I suppose we have one more summon, one more Aeon to finish off. I keep calling them summons. If they go by so many different names, Eidolons, Summons, Aeons, Espers. Well, anyways, now that Isaru's Bahamut is out, I cannot let you pass. We're not able to actually bring out our Bahamut. I guess there would be some paradoxical thing that happens. How does the faith even work like that? I don't know, who knows? But instead, we're gonna go ahead and use Ixion. I haven't actually used Ixion on camera, I guess you could say, or gave him scream time. So, we're just gonna go ahead and attack, like usual here. And I would say that attacking about... Hmm, I wanna say something like... Looking into my notes here, about five, maybe seven, five to seven times. Oh, there's a critical hit, so there's three. So I'd say going for just about until the countdown reaches zero. So for Isaru's Bahamut, what he's doing is essentially charging his overdrive over and over and over again so that he hits with Mega Flare. So I'm just going to hit him until the point where he hits his overdrive gauge. 
which is right there, and I'm gonna go ahead and use Thor's hammer. Ixion's overdrive. And I'm hoping, crossing my fingers here, hoping that this takes him out. It might not. Again, don't make me look like an idiot here, Ixion, like Bahamut did. I think he is, though. I really think he is. <laughs> well, I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm kind of surprised that Ixion did more damage with his limit break than Bahamut, but... Well, we'll take it. Yuna, let's go. There's a way to the surface up ahead. Your pilgrimage is over. You gonna kill him? No, he doesn't kill him. Well, now that that's all done with Yuna's group, we have Titus's group with Waka, Titus, and Riku. For next time. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. <laughs> we'll catch you later.